So I'm here at EGX 2016. I've just had to go on uh, She Remembers Caterpillars. I'm here with Sandra, who uh, wrote the story of the game. Um, do you want to tell us a bit more about it and, and, and how it kind of oh God, plays let's out? So She Remembers Caterpillars is a color matching puzzle game. And as it says on the giant banner over there about injecting cute into invasive brain surgery. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, so it, like the way it plays and everything, is it kind of just makes sense. You're matching the colors onto the platforms, but there's places that you can go and can't go. Um, how did you find a way to fit that and, a, and puzzle elements and then make it as a story game? And like, how does narrative work on, the, on this kind of that? So, level? we don't know if it worked great yet. We gotta <laughs> wait till it actually goes on sale. But it kind of started with a prototype by the programmer and the artist came in and started putting in elements on it. Mm. So when I was hired onto the team, they showed me an image board and gave me ideas on motif and team, stuff like that. And I kind of saw wedged everything together. It didn't start out great. I gave them a 50 page script to begin with and they were like, yeah, could you cut that down to about how much, five page? And I'm like, well, okay then. So we went for minimal dialogue, and actually most of the narrative is told through the visual design, which um, Daniel Goffin took lead on and took like feedback from me from. Yeah, so um, you're saying that the, the story kind of influenced the game style, but also the style influenced your story. How did you approach that in terms of writing for this game? It's very much limited by the fact that it is still a puzzle game, so we had to work within that structure, and we had to work within the idea that each level should take anywhere between 2 to 15 minutes to complete so there's not going to be enough room for lots of talking lots of um, other things so the artist daniel goffin and i we kind of sat down and we went what are we going to do about this we want to tell a story but there's a lot of restrictions and we kind of decided there will be minimal dialogue in the beginning as you might have noticed already mm -hmm. and most of the storytelling is actually happening in terms of the visual design. Because what you're actually seeing is the inner consciousness of a man sort of listening to what's going on outside of him. And he, in a dream state, is pulling stuff from real life, from fantasy, and just trying to create a structure that makes sense to yeah. him. It seems like this, it, it's kind of a weird way to say it, but what's that to me is it's like, the story is a very normal, real world storyline, whereas the game, play and, and the visual style is, is very different and it feels like it's two separate parts of the same thing, do you know what I mean? It's like it's it's disattached but attached at the same time, if that makes any sense at all. In a weird way, that was exactly what we were going for. Um, we, the artist and I and the programmer, we really love the whole idea of slightly creepy things mm -hmm. like um, Slipstream and New Weird. So we went for that, like really hardcore. If you look at how the game works and how the design is, there are lots of little bobbles, lots of little things that remind you of um, intestinal villiers, eyeballs, and they're just there. And when we got a, a musician in to compose the music, we actually went for that theme as well. It's like create something that is subtle and soothing. And yet because of the breaks in the music, quietly eerie, we want people's hairs to slowly rise up and have them have no idea why it happened. Yeah, it's like, it's quite like icky, for lack of a better term. And you're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. It's, it's like, it's quite comfortable as well. Um, so in terms of, of, of how much we've got to see today, is that like really a tiny sliver of, of the whole game? Very small. Yeah. The full game should have about 40 levels. There's going to be a lot more colors, a lot more challenges coming and at up. And what stage are you at at the moment? Is it very, still quite early doors or are you, are you kind of starting to plug along with it a lot more now? We are at a stage where we're releasing hopefully in November. Okay, perfect. So be very great. far along. And that'll be on PC only at this point? Or? PC only, there is a vague hope we might be able to get it on the iOS at the same time, but no promises. It's right. a really small and distributed team. It's one program and the guy's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll keep up with it as well. We'll keep up with Excellent. you guys and, and follow it further. But thanks for talking to us today. Thank you for showing up. Thank you very much. I'm here at EGX 2016. I've just had a good pick up. We're here at EGX 2016. It's the name of the game that we're about to do, I think. Now. <laughs> so I'm here at EGX 2016. That sounded really weird. Uh, Mitch. Mitch. Good. I would have said Mark and I would have been wrong. <laughs> so
that's good. 